Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to one of my other Mythic Mobs tutorials. I am already failing to speak, so you know it's going to be an interesting video. Now today, we're going to be covering uh, conditions and basically a general use for them because somebody asked me to cover them. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. I want to uh, start off by saying there are way too many conditions for me to cover them all. You are going to want to look at the manual to see what all there is because... There's, I'm pretty sure there's like a hundred different conditions. All of them are pretty straightforward, but, you know. Um, I'm just going to teach you basically how they work here. So, as always, you're going to want to uh, start off with your basic mob. After you have your things set up, I'm going to go ahead and explain this to you guys. So, here we have our typical action message that I do on my mobs now. Um, you're, you have your stances here, which... You don't need, but I do it for the sake of this tutorial. And then you're going to want to have some skills set up. Of course, I'm only using particles for the sake of this tutorial. Um, I imagine anybody else would be using actual, you know, real skills within the random skill parameter, but I will not be just to show you guys what all this can do. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is spawn in my mob here. Now let's uh, let's go into the skills and let's talk about it. So, here we're in this can, uh, my skills page. I have the first skill called day particles. It's going to check and see if the time of day equals true. And if it is, it's going to run whatever skills I have set down here. For me, it's just a particle ring effect. So that way you can you know kind of tell that it's well daytime. Now, um, one thing I do want to note. There are very, very specific times of day in Minecraft, actually. There are four different times of day. There's dawn, dusk, day, and night. Um, I believe dawn and dusk are like fillers between day and night. Day lasts until, um, or sorry, from 2,000 ticks in world to 10,000 ticks in world. I believe dusk lasts from that 10,000 to 12,000. I believe, and then from there, night is like twelve or fourteen thousand to zero, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it's kind of complicated, but uh, you can check the manual; it'll, you know, it'll tell you on there. Um, so let's go ahead and see what happens here. If I do time set day in Minecraft, if you're using essentials, it's always going to set it to zero ticks, which does not qualify as daytime. That is currently. Um, dusk if I'm getting this right so since that's dust what we're gonna want to do is time set we'll do 2000 here there we go as you can see the Sun's high in the sky and suddenly his particles are appearing that's actually perfect for our daylight particles so to show the counter of that if I do time set night <clears throat> as you can see his particles changed well, that's because in here I have a different thing called night particles, which runs if the nighttime condition is met. Now, one thing you're going to want to do is, um, well, I have four different skills here, or two different skills, sorry, I'm looking at ones below as well. I have uh, two different skills here running at the same time, but it's only picking one of them to use because of the conditions that have to be met in order for them to run. If you want more precise control on timing, there is another condition you can do, which is called world time. And then you can do T for ticks equals zero to uh, whatever you want, or it doesn't even have to be zero. I can, I don't know, it can literally be the biggest number possible, which I think is 24,000, but yeah. So basically this gives you more precise control on the time of day. Uh, if you have specific events going on or whatever, uh, entirely up to you. If you want to stick to generic stuff, you can just do like day, dusk, dawn, and night. And uh, yeah, so now that we got that out of the way, I want to look at stance-based ones. So let's go ahead and disable these and enable these two down here. Here we have two um, two skills called heated and defensive. They're basically just Again, more particle-based stuff just for the sake of display. So, heated, 
uh, stance equals heated. I'm just gonna do a quick little effect here. Effect uh, particles particle equals flame a hundred HS. Okay, so I went ahead and set up some more particles here for the heated in defensive things. Uh, skills, sorry. So, essentially, as far as I have it, these two are exactly... These two. These two are exactly the same as these two. But, they have different condition bases. This one has its stance set to heated. This has its stance set to defensive. One thing I forgot to mention also... You're generally gonna want, I mean, actually, no. Uh, whenever you run stances, it's best to run them inside of skills so that way you aren't just like having your mob randomly change. Like, one thing you could do is like random skill, skill equals blank, and it'll have like three skills, and each of those skills will be like a different set stance. Uh, that's entirely up to you. I already did a stance tutorial. If you want to, check it out. Link in the description. However, that is not what we're about here. So, Let's go ahead and see what happens. I have the stance S equals heated set to true for this particle set to run. And in order to activate that, we need to interact with the mob. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I right clicked him and suddenly he is spewing out flames. He is mad. So how are we going to set him into the other stance? Well, easily, we're just gonna, we're just gonna punch him chill out. So, now he's spewing out clouds. What I have down below, if you look at the numbers, I have a different thing set up so that way I can see what his stance is based on, well, I guess what his stance is. So, when I right click him, you can see I put him in the heated stance and now he's spewing flames, punch him, defensive stance, spewing clouds. Basically, that's, uh, I mean, those are different things, but these are conditions that are met in order to activate these particles. Again, to recap that, stance equals heated, true. Stance equals defensive, true. When heated, he will use flames. When defensive, he will use clouds. He's currently heated. Nope, now he's currently heated. And he's spewing flames. Now he's defensive and he's spewing clouds. Okay. So the last thing I want to go over is a cool little thing that you can actually mix as many conditions as you want for some very complicated mechanics. Or if you have some sort of like um, objective on your server that you want players to complete, like uh, maybe a mob has to be within a certain area, maybe it has to be in a certain area during a certain time of day, whatever the case, you can, um, yeah, you can mix as many conditions as you want. Now, just to kind of show this, I'm gonna go ahead and add another one here. Stance S equals, uh, we'll do heated, why not? But one thing we're gonna wanna do is uh, deactivate these so that way you can kind of see what, you know, what's going on. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and reload. Now let's take a look at these new conditions. Here, we need the stance equals heated condition players within a distance of 6 condition, and for it to be nighttime. So if I set it to time set day, and I switch them to heated, you'll see nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and switch it to nighttime. Well, oops, yeah, there we go. Okay, so, even though I totally just kind of bugged that part of the tutorial, you can see now, it's nighttime. Uh, I'm within a distance of 6, and his stance is defensive. Nothing is happening. But when we switch him to heated, suddenly he's exploding. Now, you can see there's so many different things going on here. It's nighttime, uh, his stance is heated, 
and now I'm within a distance of 6. If I leave that distance, the condition is no longer met and he can't run the skill. If I switch his stance, the condition is not met and he cannot run the skill. If I set it to daytime, one of the three conditions is not met and he cannot run the skill. This is just kind of an example to show you that you can have as many conditions as you want, um, but you do want to be careful not to complicate it too much. Again, make sure to check the manual because there's like at least, I'm pretty sure, around 100 different conditions that you can use, which is pretty wild. So make sure to check that out as I will not be going over all of them. I just wanted to go over some very basic ones. There are other very handy ones such as mob score, global score, and um, stuff that even pertains to plugins like World Guard Regions and such like that. So that's really all I got for you guys today. If you like this video or, you know, it, uh, if you're inspired by this video, make sure to give it a like or a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe for more, you know, laboratory content. One thing I for keep forgetting to mention in my videos, make sure to check out uh, the links in my description. I usually have a download pack which involves everything that I've covered uh, tutorial-wise. So if there's anything that you think that you missed or you want to like look at, touch up on, practice on your own, uh, it will be a part of the tutorial pack. I have them separated into different folders for viewing, you know, ease of access for you guys. So uh, you don't have to, you know, do anything special. Again, link will be in the description for that. You can just go directly download it. I'm not going to have like AdFly and tons of mirrors for you guys to go through. I trust you guys, uh, you know, and it's my gift to you for watching my videos. So thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.